Hey folks, today I have a fan theory that I would like to talk about, and this fan theory is about a location in the Incredibles universe. So for those who don't know the basic plot of both movies, it's about the illegalization and re-legalization of superheroes. So the location I actually want to talk about is the house that the Parr family gets put into in the sequel. Now, as far as it, if this is plot driven, sort of, it's not like talking about a major character in the movie. It's the house itself. But it kind of does talk about a character, just not living. So, what is the theory? Who, well, the theory is who owned the house before them. Now, if you watch the movie, Bob mentions that the house was owned by an eccentric, an eccentric millionaire who had secret exits so that he could leave and come and go as he chose without being seen. Now, on the surface, that is just a Batman reference. But we're dealing with a superhero movie, so there's got to be something deeper than that. And considering the fact that they did show one of the secret exits, it means that there's something deeper to this place, to this house than what they're letting on in the movie. Now, earlier, right before they go into the house, they talk to the Dever, Dem, Devers, and the older brother mentioned that their father actually worked with the Supers and made them a communication phone, a hotline as, you were, as it would be, so that they would be communicated without having the risk of their normal lives being at jeopardy by using their regular phones. So, they did show two particular uh, supers in the flashback, and those are Phyronic and Gazer Beam. And the funny thing is, both were also shown in the first movie during Bob and Ellen's uh, marriage. And they were also, have been stated to be part of the supers that were killed in on the island as well. So, we got that established. They're dead, but they've been shown in flashback. Um, but the bigger issue is who owned that house? My theory is that Gazer Beam owned that house. And the movies themselves kind of hint at this with him being in the flashback and him being one of the centric dead supers in both movies having more than just his super side being shown because in the first movie they had a article about a missing person now this missing person was actually gazer beams uh, regular life side as we've known that the pars they also had a regular life outside of their super super life as i'm just going to dub it um but what's so important that they would show this man in the newspaper well there's actually a little bit of an info about this guy about gazer beam outside of his super life 
and that is he was a l lawyer a lawyer working towards the legalization of superheroes and the way he did it was actually a lot better than what Helen did in the second movie now once again if you see the movie there's this line where during the part where there's they're in the um, motel yeah motel um, and she basically says uh, I have to break the law to be able to make it legal for us to be able to do what we do without being sued now gazer beam did it way better he used the law to be able to change the law to make it legal for them to continue their super life without being sued and considering there wasn't an article was like oh hey lawyer loses bar license um it means that he was so successful with defending the supers that he could have really end, had ended up being a millionaire which it would explain the line that the older Dever told Bob about the house and it would explain why there were secret exits as well like why would a private citizen or why would a normal citizen that isn't a superhero own that house and need secret exits it doesn't make sense so if this ends up being true in some way then they just got they were given a home that was owned by one of their former super friends that was killed by syndrome which could make this darker than what the movies are already yeah think about it and that's pretty much it for my theory of uh, the house from Incredibles 2